Hello friends, so today we will be starting the course of SPA that is Structured Programming Approach. Before we start the course, I would like you brief you up with the requirements of this course. For your practice, you will need to download Turbo C or Dave C++ from the internet which are easily available and are free of cost. Also keep a notebook ready for making your own notes as your own notes will make the course more easier and write the notes as easy as possible in your own words. Keep in mind that understanding the concept is more important rather than learning it. Programming is a subject which can never be learned. You need to understand the concept and then believe me it's the easiest subject you'll ever find. Now, the topics covered in this course is Introduction to C, Algorithms, Flowcharts, Operators and Expression, Control Statements, Functions, Arrays, Strings and Structures. Now, what is SPA? Many people in the course do not know what is SPA even after they finish the course. Yes, it's the truth. Now, let me help you with this concept of SP consider yourself as the black dot seen on the screen now choose any of your favorite restaurants there are four restaurants here as shown suppose there are four magdis in my locality two in the east and two in the west suppose i give you a command to go to a magdi will you reach there no, because I haven't told you which MACD you have to go to. But if I specify like you have to go to the MACD number one, then you will uh, ask me how to reach there. There are two paths as shown. There is path A and there is path B. Path A is the shorter one and you'll reach there fast. Whereas if you take the path B, it's a way longer route. For those people who like walking, they may, might take that, but not in my case though. So I'll take the path A. So my approach to the MACD is through the path A. That is what is SPA. It is the path, it's the approach to the programming in a structured way. Writing a program in a structured way and the approach to it is known as structured programming approach. So the thing is that if I don't specify which McDonald's you have to reach and I don't specify the path, you won't reach there. Same goes for the programming. If your programming is not structured properly and it's not written in a proper manner, then your program won't run. The compiler or the reader would not understand a program. Hence, your program needs to be structured in a proper way and should be easy to understand. So, that is what is SPA. Now, let us move on to algorithm. Algorithm is a finite set of statements, each having clear and precise meaning which can be executed in finite time and within finite amount of efforts. Now see the diagram as shown, algorithm. Now go towards the right and go in a clockwise direction, algorithm, finite, clear, time and effort. From this diagram you can make the full definition yeah, as shown, algorithm has finite set of statement each having clear and precise meaning which can be executed in a finite amount of time and having finite amount of effort. So it's easier to make the notes like this with the help of diagrams. So an algorithm is a finite set of statements each having clear and precise meaning which is executed in a finite amount of time and in a finite amount of effort. Now, there are many points in which you have to consider while writing an algorithm. There is a way in which you, I'll help you remember this thing. Uh, 
First, let us see what are the points you have to remember. The first condition is non-ambiguity. The meaning of the word ambiguity is being confused. So the statement should not be confusing. So the each statement should have a clear and precise meaning for the reader to understand. The second point is finiteness. The algorithm should be finite, means therefore there should be not no infinite conditions. Like suppose if I say x is greater than hundred, it now it can be greater than hundred, so means there is no n condition to it. It can be one lakh, two lakh, or even infinity, right? That goes into an infinite loop which we'll learn later but as you know that's an infinite condition the third thing is the range of input the range of input for which the algorithm works should be clearly mentioned see like suppose I write a program and it works only for the numbers which are greater than zero and less than hundred then I should mention to the user that the program runs only for the numbers which are greater than zero and less than hundred otherwise he will enter an input suppose minus one and then the output will be an error now next thing is the speed now speed is very important time waits for nobody as we know hence an algorithm should produce result efficiently and as fast as possible so we should write our programs in such a way that they should be quick and less time consuming then there is multiplicity the same algorithm can be represented in multiple ways like suppose if you write a is equal to b plus c then you can write it you can shift the b towards the left and a minus b is equal to c or in many other ways so now how will you remember these things uh, there's a very famous game that is need for speed and so i've underlined the first letters of the uh, words of the points that you have to remember that is n f r s m so you can remember need for speed is a multiplayer game. Now that's how I remember and it's easy to remember. So always try to make uh, some song or some names which are easy to remember. So NFS is a very famous game. So you can remember need for speed is a multiplayer game where N need is non ambiguity for F finiteness are for range speed is as it is speed and multiplayer game you can put it as multiplicity so need for speed is a multiplayer game all the points of the algorithms are covered in it so let us go through it quickly non ambiguity means it should not be confusing finiteness means it should not go in in finite loop range of input you should mention the range of input for which the user should enter speed means it should be fast multiplicity means it can be represented in multiple ways now let us move to the next slide now here i represent an algorithm to accept two numbers and display its product so first the step one is now this is basically what we do for an algorithm is like suppose you make a you are making a house right so before you make a house you will need a plan so this is a plan of the program which you will be writing so there are step by it's a step by step procedure for the user to understand what will be done in the program so we have to multiply two number accept two numbers and multiply it, it and display the product right Step 1 is to indicate the user to input the numbers by displaying suitable sentence. Step 2 is wait for the user to enter the two numbers. Then step 3 is normal. We calculate the product of the numbers. Step 4 is display the calculated result. And step 5 is to stop. 
So this is the basic structure of the algorithm and how you write it. So you accept the numbers, you, you calculate the product and you display it and you end it by the condition stop. Now let's move to flowchart. Now what is a flowchart? It is a diagrammatic representation of algorithm. As we wrote the algorithm, it was basically English involved in it. But as I said, diagrams are more easier to remember and understand. So the flowcharts have been designed. Each symbol has a specific name and a specific function as shown. An oval which has the name start or the end and its function is to represent the start or the end. Arrows. Arrows are the line connectors which shows the relationship between the shapes. Then input output are represented by a parallelograms. Process is represented by a rectangle and decision by a diamond. So now here is a flowchart for the product of two numbers. It's the same for which we wrote the algorithm. So the first thing is the start, which is represented by the oval. Then an arrow to the parallelogram, which says accept the two numbers from the users. Then it goes for the process, that is multiply the entered numbers. Then, the, after the numbers are multiplied, it goes for the display, which is also represented by a parallelogram. And then, the last condition is to stop. Now, the homework for you all is to write an algorithm and flowchart for the addition, accepting and adding the two numbers. We did it for the product. Now, you have to do is for addition of the two numbers. Thank you. Hope you have enjoyed the lecture. If you have any doubts, kindly mention in the comments below.